Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let's see all about the general form of an oscillator and its and its uh, equivalent circuits and everything. Guys, we'll be going through the formula. We'll be deriving it. Guys, I remembered few formulas, guys, and I don't know the exact derivation how this process continues. So, if you want the original recommend uh, original way how this works then this is not the correct video for which you are searching search for some other video i'll be just explaining you how the derivation continues and i'm not having a clear idea on how we got those values basically okay so let's go through it so basically this is the ordinary diagram for a oscillator basically an amplifier with a tank circuit guys this is what we called as a tank circuit Basically, the individual amplifier gives 180 degrees phase shift and there is a need of more 180 degrees phase shift, right? To form 0 or 360. So, we are going to use this tank circuit. So, that gives 180 degrees phase shift. So, totally we're gonna get 360. So, that's how this works. So, basically the tank circuit has three things guys. That is Z1, Z2, Z3. We can interchange them with inductors or capacitors got it guys so by exchanging them only we're gonna go we're gonna prepare those Hartley and the Colpitts oscillators I hope everyone knows about them so basically this is the diagram okay so if we want to draw for this an equivalent diagram it will be like this so and remember the points are 1 2 and 3 these are the points guys okay okay so similarly this is the diagram of equivalent diagram so I have previously told that I don't know how we wrote these two things right here sorry for that okay so Z1 and HIE and this will be the third point guys so I didn't type okay this will be the third point and the current I1 and I2 it's moving towards 1 so I1 it's moving towards I2 so it's I2 like that got it so now let us go through the theoretical part and let us go through the derivation also in this tutorial only. So basically in general form of the oscillator any of the active devices such as transistor, fed, operational amplifier may be used in place of that amplifier. I have told you that amplifier will be giving 180 degrees right. So in place of that you can use anything as that may be a transistor, fed, oscillate, operational amplifier anything like that okay right okay so now further moving on in place of z1 z2 z3 we'll be using some reactive elements so those are nothing but capacitor or inductor so the lower part of that diagram we call as tank circuit i have just told you that so now the derivation starts guys so initially we'll be starting with the load impedance so from the equivalent circuit diagram Okay. From this diagram you can say that if you assume this as the point and this as the point these two are going to be parallel right. So okay I'll be drawing it like that for you it will be clear. So I'll be assuming this and this as a small circuit. So these two are going to be completely parallel. So that will be that will be the parallel condition. So I'll be taking a book guys so that I can explain you clearly. This derivation is really really important guys this is asked two to three times in our final paper so let us try it now okay let me open this side paper so that let us discuss it clearly okay so basically these two are in parallel i have told you that z1 and hie are in parallel right that implies let us assume that there is a will be combining it to be z dash okay z dash is nothing but the parallel in between z1 and hie this is how we add guys so basically this also should be on 1 by so then it's correct so 1 by z dash is equals to hie sorry this is not hfe this is hie plus z1 by z1 into hie so Z dash is nothing but Z1 HIE by Z1 plus Z2. So this is how I got 
the parallel equation guys that's what I have just written here okay so further moving on now let us assume the main question that we have that we want to discuss that is nothing but the load impedance so we'll be assuming the load impedance as ZL between the terminals 2 and 3 guys okay in the equivalence of Z2 in parallel with series combination of Z1 and Z3 so we can write ZL in terms of Z2 and Z dash and Z3 guys okay so these two are in series and these complete this part and this part are in parallel okay so now I hope everyone got a small idea on the equation so I exactly don't know why we took like that okay so let us go through the continuation so that is nothing but 1 by ZL is equals to 1 by Z2 plus 1 by Z dash plus Z3 right so now I hope everyone got a small idea so now let us directly convert it into ZL is equals to Z dash plus Z3 into Z2 by Z2 plus Z dash plus Z3 so now I hope everyone got a small idea on this so now let us substitute the value of Z dash as Z dash we have already derived it guys so this is Z dash so if you substitute that value I am not going to solve the whole part guys because it's going to be really lengthy so once we substitute the value of Z dash that is nothing but HIE into Z1 by HIE plus Z1 plus Z3 into Z2 so take LCM so we gonna get this so this denominator and this denominator will automatically get cancelled and we got this much big equation so so now we will be trying to take what we can take common guys we can take common HIE so I took HIE common from these we will be multiplying it exteriorly so that the equation will be matching with it so I think I did a mistake here basically just give me a second okay no mistake that's correct only Z1 should be written here okay fine so we somehow managed to get the ZL value this is the load resistance okay so just a second guys so basically the voltage gain without feedback AVE voltage gain without feedback is nothing but minus HFE ZL by HIE so it is nothing but minus HFE into ZL let us assume the load is somewhere here just that's my assumption guys I don't know exactly so let us assume the load is here so hey, minus HFE into ZL by HIE that will be our voltage gain okay guys so this is an important formula you need to remember it okay further moving on the feedback fraction guys this is also an important thing the output between the terminal 3 and 2 in terms of current I1 so we found this value the output voltage that is nothing but we found in between 3 and 2 in terms of Z, Z's right so that's what we got as ZL that's the load so here we'll be finding the voltage in terms of I1 so it is nothing but V0 is equals to minus I1 into Z1 plus Z3 right so now we have the value of Z1 right so we'll be substituting the value of Z1 so we'll be getting at the end a small equation like this okay if you want you can just solve it guys so that you'll be getting the same equation so the voltage feedback now the voltage feedback to the input terminal 3 and 1 now so 3 and 1 right so sorry 3 and 1 this part previously we done with this part so 3 and 1 in terms of I1 is nothing but VFB is equals to I1 Z1 so we are sorry Z dash I1 Z dash so we already have the value of Z dash so we substituted it so we got this so beta is nothing but V naught 
and this both ratio VFB by V0. So we got this. So this will be our beta. So now we will be having our final equation which is nothing but the equation of an oscillator is nothing but mod A beta is equals to 1. I hope everyone remember that. So we have wrote A as in terms of AVE into beta is equals to 1. So substitute the values of AVE and beta. Beta value is this and AVE value is this. Okay. Once we substitute that, we want to get an equation like this guys. Okay. Let me fold the book. Okay. So we got a big equation like this. So from here I can cancel HIE and I cancel HIE. So further moving on, here there is ZL. We have found ZL initially. So substitute the ZL value. So we are, we are able to cancel this and this part. So now further moving on, you need to solve it continuously like that guys. So at the end, you will be getting an equation like this. HIE into Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 plus Z1, Z2 into 1 plus HFE plus Z1, Z3 is equal to 0. This will be our generalized equation of an oscillator. So now I hope everyone is now clear with this generalized equation. Guys, remember we need to remember this generalized equation guys because this is the equation in which you will be substituting the inductors and capacitors in both Hartley and Colpitt's oscillator. So try to remember this equation and this derivation is a bit important. It's repeated I think twice. Okay guys, I hope everyone is now clear with this derivation. Okay, if you have any more doubts, you can ask me in the comment section below as even I have many doubts on this topic. Okay, thank you. Thanks for watching.